Okay, finally, it took me forever to get this, but I finally got it. It's the 747 Classic 200 and 300 aircraft performance manuals. It took me forever to find this thing, but uh, for you flight sim guys that are wanting to know what the max weight that you can take off for a certain runway, et cetera, what the landing weights are, or what you know landing speeds are based on various weights, all that information is, is in this document, and I'll show you where you find it. I used to fly for these guys, by the way. Pretty cool. I love flying for these guys. Anyhow, where do you find the manual? Well, go to my website, AskCaptainScott.com. All this stuff's free, and there's a thing up here called Pilot Resources. Click on Pilot Resources, and that brings you down to this page. All this information, these are all the government manuals for private pilot stuff, airman's knowledge tests, private pilot's aeronautical handbook, airplane flying handbook, all this stuff, right, for, for private pilots. But what you're looking for is scroll down, and then you'll see it 747 200 300 takeoff data and just click download and this thing is downloadable so so uh, don't hesitate to keep a copy for yourself it's real handy um, what it has in here it has that's just a picture i put in there that's not again the company's manual but what it has is a list of all these different airports in here right you can go to the flaps 10 takeoff data for those airports flaps 20 takeoff usually use flaps 20 when you're a lot heavier because you need to get the airplane off the ground right remember when you take off the flaps 20 man your fuel burn is going to go sideways i mean you take off in this old bird at flaps 20 and it eats up gas it's not like how they improved it on the 747 and now the 777 that i'm on now it just sips fuel compared to what this thing used to do but anyhow in this thing it tells you how to calculate all this stuff i'm not going to go through a you know do a lesson on how to calculate because it does explain it in here and i figured if you've gone this deep and want this information um that you're you're nerdy enough to figure it out for yourself it's pretty self-descriptive but there it has all these various airports in here it gets into takeoff limitations there are a couple of different limitations in here you know one being thrust right you know what's how much thrust can you get out of the engines another one that you might find interesting is is a thing called tire speed that uh, depending on the type of tires they were using on the classic some are rated at a higher speed than than others well if you're super heavy and you have a tire weight tire weight or tire speed limitation that could be the limiting factor that you'd have to actually offload some weight off the airplane to make it be able to get out of that airport um, we ran into that in africa um, quite frequently when we were using one type of tire we switched tires and then that that alleviated the problem another thing that you'll find in here take off for under uh, runway clutter adjustments if you do have slush on the runway you can see based on the weight that uh, what type of a penalty you're going to get as far as how m much extended or how much longer that takeoff distance is going to be it's interesting now you know this stuff was all calculated by the engineer i was a captain on the thing right so so i just look at the engine i drink my coffee and have the engineer calculate that and then he just hand me up this thing with all the written speeds on it and and uh, so yeah did i spend a lot of time in this book no do i know how to use it yeah but boy it's it's a uh, to me it's a super boring so <laughs> anyhow it does have all the cool information you're looking for you know for the flight sim guys or if you bought yourself a classic uh, and want to go and fly it around this will have all it in it and then right here we have a correction for takeoff headwind tailwind and crosswind components so it, it again it has everything in it right here next is the n1 thrust setting chart and you can see based on what the actual outside temperature is what kind of thrust you should be able to obtain on those engines and then when you start getting down into these charts right here, you can see it, it, it gives the name of the airport. So, so in figuring out the calculations, if it doesn't have the name of the airport you want in here, you can look at the elevation of, J of Sapporo, Japan. It's 70 feet. It says it right here. So you can dig through and, you know, you kind of know what the elevation is of these type airports. Most of them are, you know, anywhere between that and 500 feet. So find somewhat something close in the area and, and you'll be you'll be pretty good to go. You know, so 70 feet and OK, well, let's say I'm doing Seattle. If I don't have a chart for Seattle and eh, the field elevation is there is probably like, I don't know, 300 or something. Will that chart work? Yeah, good enough. You know, you're flying a sim. So. But if you really want to get into it, yeah, these aren't out or, you know, categorized by feet. You know, all these airports just have to kind of dig through it and see which one you're looking for. You can see right here, there's the tire limitation, 225 miles an hour. Interesting that it's not in knots, isn't it? But uh, yeah, and brakes, these were high cap brakes. I can't even remember what high cap brakes are. So this one is for the aircraft that have the high cap brake. You can see right here the type of engine this has. This has the GE CF650-E2s. So 
to me that, you know, when I first started flying, I was like, wow, man, that's a lot of power. Now I, I look at these old G's and I'm like, man, those things weren't very powerful. <laughs> so kind of funny how that all comes back to you, you know. So yeah, it has it right here, how to use the takeoff data chart. You can go through this information. It shows you exactly what you need to do to calculate this stuff. But for the most part, you're not gonna really get into, um, you know, capped brakes or different issues with the airplane. There is a list in here, I think, that goes through various aircraft parts that if they're broken, it will extend the fuel burn during cruise. It will potentially uh, make for a longer runway run, takeoff run. So yeah, that's in here and you can learn how to do that. Um, it has the example for all that stuff and again, you know, it has, it has, when you're looking at these charts right here, you can see here, this is Sapporo, Japan again, right? So runway one right, you're looking at this stuff, let's say it's four degrees, it's kind of cold wintery time. At the, on runway one right, we can be as heavy as 796,700 pounds, and there's an F by it, and that just means field limit. So again, you can dig through and you'll figure out pretty quick what field tire uh, performance uh, all that stuff sort of means. You also have the calculations in here for reduced thrust because you want to save the life of the engine. Reduced thrust uh, takeoffs are good to do. I don't know how effective that is for on your sim if you start running into engine troubles, if you start doing max takeoff weights all the time. I guess it's probably not, but I'm sure there's settings that you have in there that you can set that. So if you really want to get into the meat and potatoes, start doing reduced thrust takeoffs. And again, it's like, okay, you say you got a 10,000 foot long runway, right? And the and and at max thrust, I only need seven thousand feet of runway. Well, you still have this extra runway. Why don't you use another thousand of it for the takeoff roll? You need to have some to stop in case you have an engine failure, right? So you're not going to use all of it. So let's say instead of using you know seven thousand feet, let's use eight thousand feet. How would you do that? You'd use less thrust to get the airplane off the ground, right? And that's what redu reduced thrust takeoffs are. We do those all the time in the 777. We did them on the 400 too. Again, it's descriptive. There's a chart that tells you how to read this stuff. And when you do use reduced thrust, that is going to change V1, VR, and, and V2 speed. So just make a note of that, that, you know, you can just find a generic speed in here with no reduced thrust. But if you're going to use reduced thrust, that will change V1, VR, and V2. Here's the example right here, how to use the uh, thrust data chart, so that's right there. Okay, landing limitations, that information is sitting right in here. And again, there is, look at look at how many pages there are of this stuff. Let me see, there's 1,017 pages of information for you to dig through. So again, it's downloadable, you know, knock yourself out. And again, you just go, go to the website and, um, you know, it has the information right here. Once again, just to get there, you got to go up to the top, you go to the askcaptainscott.com and it's under pilot resources and that's where the information is. So anyhow, hope you have fun with it. I mean, ironically, a, a lot of people have asked for that information from all over the world, guys that are just into it. And I, and I, I, w I thought it was pretty cool. It just took me forever to get the information. So sorry about that. But yeah, here it is. All right. Have fun. See you later.